Hello, welcome to part 20 of 500 Physiotherapy MCQ series. In description, we have given simple explanation to each and every question and detailed explanation inside our telegram channel. Now let's move to question number 381. What portion of the clavicle is most commonly fractured? Option A, distal one third. Option B, middle one third. Option C, proximal one third. Option D, distal one third and the proximal one third fractures are equally most common. And answer is Option B, middle one third. Now let's move to question number 182. Picture patient's arm in at sight might be in internal rotated and trying to reach his back pocket, but he is not able to do. So based on this weight muscle tightness patient having Option A, subscapularis. Option B, supraspinatus. Option C, infraspinatus. Option D, teres minor. And the answer is Option A, subscapularis. Now let's move to question number 383. Patient having adhesive capsulitis, you decide to give ultrasound. So at which area you give? Option A, anterior inferior. Option B, posterior inferior. Option C anterior superior, option D posterior superior and answer is Option C anterior superior Now let's move to question number 384 The principle of applying direct current to the body is Option A there should be uniform current density Option B provide complete circuit Option C the indifferent electrode size should be more than two and of times the active electrode placed at the therapeutic option D all of the above and the answer is option D all of the above now let's move to question number 385 a patient is referred to physical therapy with C6 nerve root injury which of the following clinical finding would not be expected with this type of injury Option A, diminished sensation on the anterior arm and the index finger. Option B, paresthesia of the long and the ring fingers. Option C, weakness in bicepital and supinator. Option D, diminished brachioradialis reflex. And the answer is Option B, paresthesia of long and ring fingers. Now let's move to question number 386. A therapist is concerned about the possibility of patients developing a deep vein thrombosis following surgery. Which of the following special tests would be useful to identify the presence of deep vein thrombosis? Option A. Bendel Litter's test. Option B. Foreman's sign. Option C. Klinger's test. Option D. Ultrasound. And the answer is Option D. Ultrasound. Now let's move to question number 387. Heat is regulated by dash. Option A. Shivering. Option A. Brown adipose tissue. Option C. Sweating. Option D. All of the above. And the answer is. Option D. All of the above. Now let's move to question number 388. Idiopathic brachial plexitis usually presides by viral illness is called. Option A. Thoracic outlet syndrome. Option B. X paralysis. Option D. Gullin Barrett syndrome. Option D. Personage Tudor syndrome. And the answer is Option D. Personage Tudor syndrome. Now let's go to question number 389. The popliteus muscle performs an important action of unlocking by Option E. Indirectly rotating the femur on the tibia during the open chain movement. Option B. Externally rotating the tibia on the femur during open chain movement. Option C. Externally rotating the femur on the tibia during the closed chain movement. Option D. Internally rotating the tibia on femur during closed chain movement. And the answer is Option C. Externally rotating the femur on the tibia during closed chain movements. Now let's move to question number 390. Osteophyte developing and the joint at Lusker characteristically compressed spiral nerve part. Option A intervertebral forming. Option B anterior part of the body. Option C posterior part of the body. Option D paradural areas. And the answer is Option A intervertebral forming. 
Now let's move to question number 391. Mechanism proceed for superior loop diagram and anterior to posterior relation include. Option A, folding or outstretched arm. Option B, underhand throwing motion. Option C, repetitive or head reaching. Option D, repetitive resisted elbow extension. And the answer is. Option A, folding or outstretched arm. Now let's move to question number 392. Which portion of the humerus is most commonly affected in osteochondritis dissecans? Option A. Capitulum. Option B. Middle epicondyle. Option C. Lateral epicondyle. Option D. Greater tubercle. And the answer is. Option A. Capitulum. Now let's move to question number 393. In patient after right DHR, what moment he should avoid? Option A. Turning to right with right extremity fixed. Option B. Turning to right with left extremity fixed. Option C. Turning to right with left extremity fixed. And answer is. Option A. Turning to right with right extremity fixed. Now let's move to question number 394. A patient with a spinal cord injury positioned on a tilt table elevated to 60 degree begins to complain of dizziness and nausea. The therapist's most immediate response should be. Option A. Lower the tilt table 10 degree and take off patient's abdominal binder. Option B. Leave the tilt table at 60 degree and call for medical assistance. Option C. Monitor the patient's vital signs with the tilt table at 60 degree. Option D. Lower the tilt table to horizontal and monitor the patient's vital signs. And the answer is... Option D. Lower the tilt table to horizontal and monitor the patient's vital signs. Now let's move to question number 395. A patient recovering into the hospital from a total knee replacement is examined by physical therapist, assuming an uncomplicated recovery. Now, much knee range of motion is realistically prior to the discharge. Option A. 0 to 60 degree. Option B. 0 to 90 degree. Option C 15 to 90 degree. Option D 15 to 105 degree. And answer is Option B 0 to 90 degree. Now let's move to question number 396. While examining a patient diagnosed with eyeless tendinitis, a therapist note that the foot appears to be pronated in standing. Which motion is combined to create pronation? Option A. Abduction, dorsiflexion and inversion. Option C. Adduction, dorsiflexion and inversion. Option C. Abduction, plantar flexion and inversion. Option D. Adduction, plantar flexion and inversion. And answer is. Option A. Abduction, dorsiflexion and inversion. Now let's move to question number 397. In sports, which ligament is the most commonly injured? Option A. Anterior cruciate ligament. Option B. Posterior cruciate ligament. Option C. Lateral collateral ligament. Option D. Middle collateral ligament. And the answer is. Option D. Middle collateral ligament. Now let's move to question number 398. Blood brain barrier formed by. Option B. Astrocyte. Option B. Schwann cells. Option C. Microglia. Option D. Endothelium of the cerebral capillaries. And the answer is. Option D. Endothelium of cerebral capillaries. Now let's move to question number 399. Ataxia with tremor during volitional movement is likely associated with addition of. Option A. Motor cortex. Option B. Basal ganglion. Option C. Cerebellum. Option D. Pyramidal tract. And the answer is Option C. Cerebellum. Now let's move to question number 400. Which muscle originates from the dorsal surface for upper two thirds of the lateral border of the scapula? Option A. Thromboid minor. Option B. Teres minor. Option C. Teres major. Option D. Infraspinators. And the answer is. Option B. Teres minor. 
So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. I think you have learned something valuable today. See you in the next part. That's part 21. Thank you and bye bye.